Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Zach Sargent. I'm the technical marketing engineer for ServiceNow for cloud management. Um, tonight, I want to talk to you a little bit about Jakarta. So, this is a new release for us in terms of capabilities for cloud management. And even though we've done cloud management in the past, many of the paradigms that you're going to see in the new um, cloud management portal are going to be very different. Um, so I want to walk you through from beginning to end. So we'll start tonight at the beginning um, with setting up a mid-server. So what you'll see here is I have a brand new instance, freshly cleaned, uh, freshly minted, and I've actually logged into it as the maintenance user. So this is a special user that employees of ServiceNow can use to access your instance. And what we're going to do is just to show you how clean this instance is, I'm going to show you what the plugins are first. I don't even have any bookmarks, so there's no cheating here. We're going to search for the cloud management plugins. Now, if you don't have cloud management enabled, um, you're going to need to get that enabled. So for me, that's pretty uh, simple here. I'm going to be able to activate that. Again, because it's minty new, this is a minty fresh instance, I'm going to actually have to create a user for myself. Now, I could just go in and go on with the main charade, but that's not a really good way to go through cloud management. Um, for one thing, it screws up all the permissions, and the main user isn't real. Um, so there's nothing to tie back to when it comes to ownership of some of these records. Okay, so I'm just going to submit this, and uh, have all of my crazy password apps. I finally got Chrome to quit asking me uh, for passwords, because I had a stack of three of those cards come up every time I got something new. Um, okay. Now, in Jakarta's cloud management, there's actually several different rules for cloud. And I can go with those roles in here as well. Or I'm just going to breeze through this, not use the audio. The second thing we have to do is set up a mid server. Um, the mid server requires a user. So, actually this time we'll get smarter, save that, no really, boy every time it sees the password, the word password on this uh, screen, it's aggressive, they love LastPass, especially a couple of weeks ago we had the uh, whole cloud bleed thing, so it was, uh, it was good. So you notice there's a role here called mid server. So for the mid-server piece, um, we're going to save that role, attach it to this user, and that's going to be needed later. I remember assigning a uh, password to this. So I'm going to do that now. Okay. No, really, not now. Okay, so the next question is, how do I set up a mid-server? Um, and the mid-server is actually necessary in the Jakarta release of cloud management, uh, more than just beyond what we used to do with VMware, because VMware is behind your firewall and in your data centers. We needed a mid-server to be able to talk to vCenter. Uh, this way, we didn't have to have you open up holes in your firewall, uh, make all your security people crabby about uh, letting a, a cloud provider or a cloud service into your data centers. So what we're going to do is we're going to install a mid-server to be able to reach into your vCenter. Um, additionally, this gives us a little more horsepower in terms of processing for AWS and Azure as well. So some of the payloads that we get back from the API calls for various clouds are very, very large. So the mid-server is a way that we can scale this. Um, you can put a mid-server anywhere. So if you don't have a data center, if you're all into the cloud, 
and you're in AWS or Azure, um, the mid server is, is going to be recommended to be behind the firewalls that you put up there. So again, that's a, uh, a piece that allows us to discover uh, some of the things that are back there. So if you have our discovery or mapping tools, you're going to require a mid-server back there anyway. I recommend that you put a mid-server anywhere that you have a large group of servers. Um, although technically anywhere that's within network reach is doable, the latency for reaching far distant places, far-flung places on the, on the internet um, is pretty high. So the mid-server allows us to move in closer, reduce some of that latency for the chatter back and forth, and then report back to uh, the home office here, ServiceNow. So let's show that. So I'm going to set up a mid-server using a uh, virtual box. So on my computer here, um, I already have a Linux Mint guest. So I'm going to boot this guest, we're going to log into the instance, and we're going to download the mid-server software. Yes, I have a very large monitor. Um, you can use almost any distribution of Linux or, or Windows. I highly recommend using Windows for most of your mid-server needs because if you're going to be doing discovery on Windows servers, you're going to need WMI calls and, and queries as well. And we can't quite do that from Linux yet, although probably we'll be able to pretty soon. Okay, so now we're going to be downloading a um, 64-bit version of the Linux software for the mid-server. And that's apparently going to take 10 minutes. Okay, so after a couple of minutes, we're now down downloading the mid-server software. So we can open that and uh, put that somewhere on our Linux machine. So here is my target mid server. I'm going to do, I'm going to make myself root because it's just easier to get around. <coughs> and then I'm going to uh, unzip the mid server. Okay, as you can see, I have several versions of the software on this mid server. You can run multiple versions at the same time on the same mid, but you have to be um, you have to be careful. So that's a topic uh, above and beyond what we're doing here today. So for now, let's just assume one virtual machine uh, for one mid server. Okay. As we unzip this, it's going to create an agent directory, and under that directory, multiple subdirectories with all the stuff for the mid server. So I'm going to rename that agent into something uh, more memorable. And then here in the base directory, we can see all of the files for um, starting and manipulating the mid-server. Yes, you can run the installation and the installer pieces, um, but I'm going to go straight into the configuration file and just kind of show you the couple of little bits that it takes to get this working. So as you can see here, we actually have pretty good documentation as to what goes where. Let's 
So in this case, I'm using an instance out of our lab, which isn't really accessible to the outside world. In your case, you're going to have whatever URL you put into your browser to reach your instance. Now, remember that mid-server username that we set up a little bit ago? That goes here. And the password. Oops. I don't know why it went all the way down like that. In this case, I didn't use a very creative password. You'll want to be somewhat more creative. This is the name that's going to appear inside the console um, when we fire up this, when we fire this mid server up to see it in the console. I don't know that, that made any sense. Okay, now I have the configuration set. And we're going to fire this off. Okay, so let's see if we see any mid servers in this instance yet. Not yet. Looks like it's busy doing stuff though. Ah, uh, there we go. So now you can see in the left side, what I'm doing is I'm tailing the log of what happens as the mid server is running. It's very verbose. Um, you can get a lot of good information for troubleshooting out of these logs. Here, we'll notice that we have a new mid server. So I'm going to want to validate that mid server. Okay. All right. Down and validating. Mid sizing is again kind of beyond the scope here. Um, some customers have a single mid, some of them have two or three. Um, one of our customers I know has over 200. They have a whole fleet of these things. Um, discovering an infrastructure that spans millions of pieces of, of uh, hardware. So um, it really depends on your application and what you're going to be doing with ServiceNow and what you expect to be able to pull back into it. So from a cloud management perspective, just to put our toe in the water here, a single mid-server, two processors, four, megs, four gigs of RAM um, is going to be plenty. Okay. Is it running? It is running. So we have all our nice little green indicators which tell us we now have properly configured mid-server. I don't know that that made any sense. Mid-01. Crooked glasses.